Hello and welcome back to Lady Jane Books. Today I'm doing a Q&A. As promised, I am doing my Q&A video. This is a celebration for achieving over 200 subscribers. I've asked you guys to put in your question and now it's time to spill the tea on me. Volume 2. So let's get started. Anne with the book starts us off by asking, what is your favorite book? And also, do you prefer standalones or series? Way to start us off with like the toughest question ever, Anne. Oh my goodness, you don't hold back, do you? <laughs> but in all honesty, this is a great question. I have to say my favorite book is Revival by Stephen King. When this book came out, I just started becoming a reader again. So this book has a very special place in my heart. It's really spooky and creepy and has these weird like messages. Very, very good. So I have to go with my favorite book of all time is Revival by Stephen King. As for standalones versus series, it is no secret that I am a painfully slow reader. So I obviously default to standalones because I feel like I accomplished something once I finished the book. So that's kind of what I really gravitate to. But I can appreciate that some series have incredible world building and you get more attached to the characters and you get a deeper storyline. So I don't mind a good series, but I'll always choose a standalone over a series. Great question, Anne. Thank you so much. The next question comes from the amazing Uptown Horror Reviews. Uptown Horror Reviews asks, if you could choose one book to be made into a movie, which would it be and who would you want to star in it? That's a phenomenal question, Uptown. I am so excited about this one. Literally a half an hour has passed by, Uptown, and I am still struggling to answer this question. It is so good. I would love for The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor to be made into a film. The Chalk Man is a really cool, like, coming of age, noir type of murder mystery thing. It's got a great story. It's got some fantastic twists to it and it would make a fantastic movie in my opinion. As for starring in it, it's no secret that my favorite stars are Killian Murphy, Ethan Hawke, and Robert Downey Jr. But I'm not sure if any of them would really fit well into The Chalk Man. So that's something to think about. I think of the three, I would have to choose Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy is one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood in my opinion. He's fabulous and I don't think he's ever done a really like murder mystery type of story before so I think that would be a really fun role to see him in. So I have to go with The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor starring Killian Murphy. Thank you so much Uptown. That was a fantastic question. I loved it. Seal223 asks, who is your favorite author and what is your favorite book by them? Another impossible question. I love these. I've already mentioned that I really love Stephen King, but I think for this one, I want to go in a little bit of a different direction. I'm going to say Daniel Vega is one of my favorite authors of all time. She has been described as the young adults genre version of Stephen King. And I have to say that her first book, The Merciless, is one of my all time favorites. I love the packaging of this book. Can we just say it looks like a really pretty pink prayer book, but then it has like this pentagram on it. It's really fun. I loved it. And that's what drew me to it. But I have to say the story is just as good as the packaging. It is fast paced. It is gory. It is spooky, scary. Loved it. Great question, Seal. Diaz discusses, asks, say that five times fast, Jane. Diaz discusses, asks, is there a book that you strongly disagree with everyone on? There are plenty of books that I disagree with everyone on. I don't like Stephen King's crime work. I didn't like Joyland. I really didn't like Mr. Mercedes. I DNF that one after the first book. And everyone seems to really love it, but I don't. And I seem to be on my own in that opinion. So I have to go with there are some Stephen King books that are just not 
they're not good in my opinion and that makes me a little bit of an outsider on that but that's okay the resurrectionist is also a classic example of a book that i disagree with everybody on it's very popular in the extreme horror community but i personally didn't care for it so yes diaz there are plenty of books that i disagree with many people on great question thank you so much books yada yada asks are you canadian and also what is your profession i didn't know when i set up this q a that so many people would be really interested in where i live and y'all nosy <laughs> wow i don't really disclose where i live for privacy and security reasons but i can confidently say no books yada yada i am not canadian as for my profession I am part of one of the oldest professions in the world. Government. That's right, I have a profession in public service. And so because of that, that's why I don't really tell about where I live because I do serve the public and then that's going to cause problems and issues. So we're just going to move on from that. But good question, books, yada, yada. I really appreciate it. Next up is PR Far. PR Far asks, what is your favorite and least favorite movie adaptation of books you really liked? So I know my least favorite adaptation has to be the new Stephen King's Pet Cemetery movie. The latest one, I hated it. I've ranted about it on my channel before. Go check out that video because holy goodness, that was not good. They basically butchered that book and they had such opportunity to make it like creepy and new and they just didn't. They just literally regurgitated the old movie in a new format. Not for me. Hated it. Hated it. For my favorite adaptation, it has to be You by Caroline Kepnes. I love the Netflix series of You. I read You before the Netflix series came out and I adored the book. Like it was so different than anything I ever read. It was one of my favorite books of that year. And then the Netflix series came out and they stayed so true to the book that I really loved it. I love the casting. I love the interaction between Joe and Beck. I love the series of events that occur. It's so, so, so good. PR Far also asks, streamy? But PR Far? Oh, I think you mean steamy, right? You mean steamy. Okay. Also, what are your steamy book recommendations? Funny enough, I actually just did a weird romance book recommendations. So definitely go check that out if you want some of Lady Jane's weird romance reads. But to give you the quick version, PR Far, I love. Shea Savage books. They are so good. They're very steamy, very spicy, great stories, especially Transcendence by Shea Savage. That one was so much fun. Go check out my other video if you want to learn more about it, but dang, that is a good book. So I highly recommend anything by Shea Savage. PR Far also asked me on Instagram, do I play any instruments? No, I do not. I did flirt with the violin for quite a time, but there were too many strings attached. <laughs> that was a good one, right? Oh yeah, I thought that went up like in the late last night. That's good. Hey y'all, listen up asks, if you could own any car, what would it be? This was so good. This is a different type of question. It may come to a surprise that I love vintage things. Definite surprise, Jane. Definite surprise there. Yeah. Definitely surprised there, Jane. Yeah, look at, look at your face. Look at your hair. Look at your teacups. Yeah, we had no idea that you like vintage things. Wow. You'll learn something new every day. So I really like older cars, like more of like the 1950s type of style. So I really like like the 1950s style cars. And I really like Rolls Royces. And to have like a 1950s or vintage Rolls Royce would be a dream come true for Lady Jane. I just love the shape of them. They're so classic looking. They're really elegant. So if I could own any car in the world, it would be a vintage like 1950s Rolls Royce. 
that's so gorgeous it's elegant i love the shape i love everything about that type of car so if i could own any car in the world it would be a vintage rolls royce john thank you for asking the next series of questions comes from reading and whatnot one if you could read only one book for a year, what book would you pick? I think I would pick something new because I'm not a big rereader. Like I don't like rereading books. I'd rather discover new worlds. So I'm going to pick a new book, new to me at least, a new book that is longer because I'm a slow reader so if I pick a longer book I'll have something to new to read and keep me going so what's I think I'm gonna go with Lissy's story by Stephen King I've always wanted to read that book and I never got around to it and it's big it's like a bigger book and I've heard it's really emotional and a really great story so I'm gonna go with if I could only read one book for a year it would be Lissy's Story by Stephen King. Number two, what is your proudest accomplishment? I have several, but one of my proudest accomplishments is starting BookTube. I have talked about this previously on my channel that I really wanted to start a BookTube channel years ago, but I felt like it was uncool and a friend of mine kind of dissuaded me from doing it. But Starting a booktube takes a lot of courage. You're basically putting your entire personality out on the internet for strangers to judge, really, and determine if they like you or not. So it can be very daunting to start a booktube. And getting over that insecurity and doing it anyway because you think it's going to be fun is one of the most rewarding things ever that I've experienced. So definitely getting over my insecurity of starting a booktube channel, starting it, and then being part of this wonderful community. Number three, can you touch your toes? Yes. Can you? <laughs> All right. And number four, what makes your heart smile? A nice cup of tea and good company. Those are some awesome questions, reading and whatnot. I loved it. Thank you so much for participating. The next question comes from Priscilla Bettis. And if I'm butchering your last name, I sincerely apologize. Please let me know if that's correct or not because I would hate to make the same mistake twice. Priscilla basically talked about knitting because I showed some of my knitting books in my previous bookshelf tour. And so she asked to see some of my handmade items. So here we go. I won't try them on because I'm afraid they're gonna mess up my hair and I spent a lot of time on my hair this morning. One of the main things I make are headbands, like winter weather headbands. And I design them and I knit them. I'm really into like these crossover patterns this season. It's a lot of fun. And then here's the same style in gray. I can really bust these out in like an hour. I will sit in front of the TV or listen to an audiobook and my needles will just be going, 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 going. And it kind of freaks my family out because I'll be watching the TV, but my hands will be going like this, like automatically. So that's kind of fun. I've been knitting since I was really young. So I'm kind of more of an expert style. So this year I started something new and I am doing Fair Isle knitting. I love these type of mittens. I think they're so beautiful. Um, there's a lot of detail work that goes into one of these. This is a new thing for me. Like I've never done like this dual color style of knitting and I've never made like these type of mittens before. So this is something that I've been working on. And it's kind of cool. It just gives like a really neat like fairy tale type of feeling. And they're very warm too. They're double knit. And I had a matching one but it fell off the needles, which if you're a knitter, there is no greater fear than your work falling off the needles. And so then I had to unravel it because it got damaged. So I'm working on the twin of this mitten, but I love challenging myself with knitting. And this is something that I've challenged myself with this year. And I think it's a pretty good, um, pretty good product, I have to say. It's a lot of fun. This takes more like concentration though. You have to like pay attention to what you're doing with the color work. I've actually thought about knitting some things and selling them on an Etsy shop, but I don't know if anyone would actually buy them. 
So if you could please comment below and let me know honestly if you think anybody would be interested in buying some handmade knitted goods, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Priscilla. That was a lot of fun for me to share. The next question comes from Emily Jean Blatt. Emily asks, where do I live and what do I do for work right now? So I've already addressed the where I live question. I don't talk about where I live for privacy and security reasons. I will tell you that I live in North America. As of working right now, I mentioned that I do have my background in government affairs, but unfortunately there's a lot of furloughs and shutdowns where I live right now. And so for work right this minute, I make booktube videos. But those are excellent questions. Thank you so much, Emily. I really appreciate that you participated. The next question comes from Janelle Torrens. Janelle asks, what book comes to mind when you think of this is the reason why I read? For me, it has to be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think that is a masterpiece of a book. I love the setting, I love the concept, I love the characters, the complexity of the character development. Fabulous, just so good. Thank you so much, Janelle. I really appreciate that question. That was awesome. The next question comes from Pei Veo at Attention. He asks, what is your education background? Have you done any university or plan to in the future? That is a fantastic question, Pei. I really value education. Like it's one of the most important things in life to me. And I have done university. I went to a very prestigious university for my traditional four year undergrad degree. So I got my uh, bachelor's of arts at that school. And then after I graduated, I worked in government affairs for a few years and then got the opportunity to continue my education by getting my MBA which I just finished last year. And it also is one of my proudest accomplishments in my life. I've always wanted to get my master's degree. It's been one of my, it's literally been a life goal of mine to get a master's and then to have that opportunity to do it. And having done it, it's just, it's an incredible feeling. It really is. I actually did it quicker than all of my other classmates. It takes on average about two to three years to get the degree that I did. And I did mine in about a year. So it was a lot of work. I didn't take any breaks. I just kept doing class after class after class and I doubled up in my semesters and I was taking more classes than everybody else and I was not taking any breaks. I took you know intensive classes, I took summer classes, I took all of the classes. And so I came out with my MBA for it, which fulfills a lifelong goal for me. So great question, Pei. I really appreciate it. Jeremy Fee asks, what is your favorite letter of the alphabet and why? Jeremy, it has to be J. J for Jane. That's awesome. No, but I do like the letter J because of Jane. <laughs> great question, Jeremy. That made me smile. Books and Sushi asks, do you like traveling? And if yes, what has been your favorite place to visit? That's a really good question, Books and Sushi. And it's very complicated, actually. I love exploring new places, being parts of other cultures, learning history and traditions and seeing history. Love it. I love exploring new worlds in that way but I hate getting there. Absolutely hate it. I don't like packing. I don't like flying. I don't like the hassle of getting your luggage. I don't like traveling to try to find your hotel. I don't like all of the logistics surrounding it. Something I do like is traveling by train. Trains are a lot of fun for me. I don't mind trains. I could sit there and listen to my book, read an audiobook and not like worry about anything, but the whole plane thing is not for me. Necessary evil though, I know. Great question, Books and Sushi. As for my favorite place to visit, that's a good one. I love Newport, Rhode Island. If you've never been to Newport, Rhode Island, you gotta go. They have all these gorgeous like mansions 
Some of them are really historical. Some of them are newer, but it's just like this epicenter of, wow. <laughs> Every few years I'll travel to Newport and I'll pick another mansion to see and I'll spend the day doing the tour and going to a restaurant and just hanging by the ocean. It's so pretty there. It's incredible, especially during like the summer months. Just gorgeous. I love the ocean views. They have a gorgeous cliff walk where you literally just look out into this expansive ocean. Phenomenal. And then I love the tours. I love seeing the history, the style, the architecture, the art. There's so much art in these buildings. It's incredible. And I love hearing the histories about how people got really wealthy and then who squandered the wealth and then who ran off with the butler. Oh, it's so fun. It's The tours are so much fun. So definitely, I have to say Newport, Rhode Island for my favorite destination. Thank you so much, Books and Sushi. I really appreciated your question. The next question comes from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Bookworm Adventure Girl asks, are there any movies that you liked better than the book? That's a good question. This is gonna get me into booktube jail, but that's okay, that's fine. I have been slowly working through Stephen King's It, but I made a mistake and I saw the new movies before I read the books. And I have to say, I loved the first movie in the It chapter one. Yeah, I loved the first movie. I think that almost put me at a disadvantage because the way the movie was done, it was so linear and it had a really great story flow to it and the book doesn't. The book is kind of harder to read. So I am going to go out on a limb here and say that I enjoyed the first Stephen King's It movie more than the book. Don't tell anyone I said that though, Bookworm Adventure Girl, don't tell anybody. Literally everyone sees this. <laughs> But that's a great question. I really appreciated it. The next question comes from Katja. Katja asks, what do you know about BookTube now that you wish you knew when starting your channel? And who are your favorite non-BookTube YouTube creators? These are phenomenal questions. Thank you, Katja. I wish I had gone into BookTube with more patience. I think someone who's not a creator looks at YouTube and they do happen to see like these channels that have the hundreds of thousands of views and they think that's everybody and it's not news alert it is not i didn't know how much patience would be involved and the need to really craft your content to what your audience wants to see so i do wish that i had known that when i started because i feel like it would have made the earlier videos a little more satisfying for me and now that I know that, I am really enjoying BookTube and appreciate all the growth that this channel has done. And I wanna thank my subscribers directly for that. That's all because of you. Thank you so much. And as for what are my favorite non-BookTube booktubers, non-BookTube booktubers, Jane? No, Jane. What, are, and as for my favorite non-BookTube YouTube creators, for style, I really like Fancy Vlogs by Gabby. SMLXO. I really like Jade the Libra for lifestyle and she does kind of a like spooky book club but she's not really a booktuber she's more of a lifestyle creator so I, I put her on the list and then I've also gotten really into like financial literacy lately I don't know and so I really like watching like the Dave Ramsey highlight show and hearing about people's problems and him going off on them and telling them what they should do was so much fun and I also really like Graham Stephan. Graham Stephan, he kind of does the same thing as Dave Ramsey a little bit, but he reacts to other people's videos about their finances and he sometimes rants about it and it's a lot of fun to watch. So those are my top YouTube creators that are my favorites. Um, go check them out, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. So thank you, Katja, that was a great question. Books and Brushes is up next with a couple of questions. I love your beautifully big window and view. What is the view of? Can you tell us about it and the surrounding area? So this is actually a public walkway behind me and it walks through like this kind of conservation forest area and there's also a um, waterway 
right next to it so as you walk you're walking by the water right it's really gorgeous it's a lot of fun and it's really nice to see in the different seasons so right now it's really stark and barren and there aren't many people on the walkway basically all around here is conservation land so I have a really good mix of like a city and conservation so to on that side is all the city stuff I can walk to like the grocery store but if I walk that way then it's all like trees and nature and bushes and things like that it's all forest conservation and then running parallel is a waterway and so that's kind of nice to like walk first thing in the morning you're you get the scent of the water and you get the shade of the trees and it's really nice it's really pretty i enjoy walking every single day if you had to knit a book cover what book cover would you want to recreate great question i would think no exit because it's kind of got a gradient type of thing and some yarns have an automatic gradient so I really wouldn't have to do anything for it. But I do like the colors in the book cover and I think it's a lot of fun and it's pretty simple so it shouldn't take me too much time to make. Have you ever damaged a book? Tell us the story. I am humiliated to say yes I have damaged a book. I was actually talking to my friend Kayla Lenson about this once. When I was much younger, I would see everybody bring books to the beach. So when I made a beach trip, I took my very first Stephen King's book, Night Shift. It was one of the mass market paperback versions. And I put it in my beach bag thinking I was so cool. Then I sat my butt in the sand and read it while I was soaking, dripping wet from the ocean and I'm there like flipping through the page. It was destroyed, it's all water damage. The cover was like bent backwards because it was under my towel and it got scraped up from the sand and there's sand in between the pages and it's all like water damaged and warped. I am so embarrassed that I let that happen to one of my books and I've learned never more. I don't take books to read on the beach anymore. I just don't. Mm -mm -mm. I, I was young and dumb, what can I say, so. That's my story. Question, what is your favorite bookstore or book buying experience? A particular memory you treasure. This is fabulous books and brushes. I love these questions, oh my goodness, so creative. I love going to the bookstore. My family is big into reading, okay? So if one of us is going to the bookstore, somebody else is tagging along. Most of the time it's me. And I remember there was this one Saturday when I had been so stressed out from school, like I was, you know, really stressed out. And my dad said, come on, I'm gonna go to the bookstore, I'd love you to come. And I almost didn't go because I was working so hard on a paper, but then I was like, you know what, forget it, let's go. I spent two hours with my dad just browsing up and down all the bookshelves, and we picked out a couple of good things, and, I, then we sat down and we had coffee inside of the bookstore and we showed each other what we were buying and we we're discussing it and afterwards I was so calm. So afterwards I was just so calm and my dad kind of figured out that I just needed a break and I'm the type that I, if I'm in something I'm in it and I'm gonna see it through and nothing else is gonna distract me until I get this done. And he saw that I was really, really overwhelmed with this project. So he knew to kind of bring me to my favorite place to kind of break up that stress. And I remember it's just one of my favorite memories with my dad. And then when we just took the time to sit and have a coffee and tea together and discuss the books and not rush home to do more work, it was really therapeutic for me in that moment. And I really appreciate that my dad recognized that I needed that time and that experience. So. That's fabulous. I had never actually told anybody about that experience before, books and brushes. So thank you so much for asking me. That means a lot. Amy Harbord and Pages asks, who is your favorite Outlander side character? That's a great question. I love that question. We were talking about how much I love the TV show of Outlander. The books intimidate me. Like I don't think I could read the books, but I loved the TV show adaptation. Ooh, so good. For side characters, I have to say I really liked Gillis Duncan. I thought she was so cool. And I knew there was something like up about her, but I wasn't sure what. But oh my gosh, she was a lot of fun. 
I really, I liked her character. And early on, I was kind of endeared to Frank Randall because he didn't ask for any of this stuff, man, you know? Like, he didn't ask for his wife to disappear and then come back and talk about all these strange things and then have all those other complications. Later on, he kind of got a little gross in my opinion, but early on, I really, really liked him and I felt really bad for him. So I have to say, I did initially like Frank Randall, but that was short-lived. <laughs> I could never really figure out Dougal McKenzie's character. Like, I wasn't really sure if he was, like, good or bad. And I so I really appreciated that complexity about him. And so I did like him in some way, but only because I couldn't really figure him out. He was, like, this weird enigma. So those are my top three. And I think Brianna's boyfriend was so cute. I forget his name because it's been a minute since I've watched it, but I thought Brianna's boyfriend was so cute. I loved him so much. And I felt so bad that he had to go through the things that he went through. Oh my goodness, that poor man. Oh, terrible. So thank you, Amy. That was a fantastic question. The next question comes from none other than Amrata by the book. Amrata asks, Shag, marry, or kill? Pennywise the Dancing Clown from Stephen King's It, Lizzie Borden, or the Mushroom Grandpa from Mexican Gothic? Oh my gosh, Amrata. <laughs> oh my gosh, Amrata. Really? Oh man. Whew. Ah, oh, this is gonna be hard. Well, we can definitely agree that the mushroom grandpa has to go. Like, there's, there's just no way. I'm sorry, I have standards. That's a no for me. He's gross and not just because he's made of mushrooms, okay? No, there's other things in there that are just no for me. He's just no. So we're gonna kill off mushroom grandpa from Mexican Gothic, surprise, surprise. So that leaves Shag and Mary. Pennywise and Lizzie Borden. Where do you come up with this, Amrita? Really? Like, how did you... <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there and say that Lizzie Borden may not be the best person to trust around family members. I'm just saying it. We're all thinking it. I'm just saying it. So I think I cannot marry Lizzie Borden. No, I would not. I would not sleep well at night if I married Lizzie Borden. So I think I'm gonna have to shag her that doesn't sound good, but you put me up to this, I'm Rita. I'm just telling you. And also, she's kind of like, she seems kind of nuts, so maybe it would be a good time. I don't know. Maybe. Um, so maybe it would be, like, fun. I, I don't know. I don't know. So that means that I would have to marry Pennywise the Dancing Clown from it. To be honest, I'm not mad about it, though. Like, I feel like we could make it work. You know, he comes home from work. And he's all like grumpy, being like, I can't kill all the kids today. And I'm like, that's nice, dear. And, you know, I make him dinner or something like that. It could work, to be honest. Like, I feel like we could work through things. Could you imagine us at, like, couples counseling or something? No. I don't know. I feel like I could almost make it work with Pennywise. I mean, what am I saying? Why, why are you making me do this, Aubrey? Really? <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff? Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, so I'm going to shag Lizzie Borden, marry Pennywise the Dancing Clown, and kill Mushroom Grandpa from Mexican Gothic. There you go, Amarita. I hope you're happy. <laughs> but seriously, that made me smile and laugh. Thank you so much. That I loved it. That, that was a fun time. Yeah. The next question comes from Jess the Book Freak. Jess asks, Why do you have two copies of Rebecca? It's one of my favorite books, so I understand that it deserves double the shelf space. This is fabulous, Jess. This is really good. So in one of my previous videos, I hauled Rebecca, and I mentioned that I wanted to get the beautiful red satin cover before Hollywood got its hands on all of the book covers and changed it to the movie tie-in because I'm not about that life. And so I bought it, and then when I hauled it, and I've, this is on camera, I noticed that there was a little rip in it, and I was so mad because I wanted to keep a really good pristine copy as like my copy of Rebecca. And then I got so mad that it had ripped in shipping 
that I bought another copy and I made sure that that one was pristine. So now I have two copies of Rebecca and I think if I want to read it, I'll read the ripped version and then keep the nice version as like my museum piece, so to speak. So that is why I have two copies of Rebecca, Jess, because I am way too picky for my own good, to be honest, Jess. Thank you so much for asking. That's, that was a good question. The next question comes from For Booking Out Loud. For Booking Out Loud asks, what is my biggest accomplishment and how do you feel you've grown as a creator, YouTuber, booktuber since you've started? So I've already mentioned that starting my booktube is one of my greatest accomplishments. And I really, really appreciate that I did do it because now I'm part of this wonderful community. And as for how I've grown as a creator, just by doing this Q&A, I am way more comfortable in front of the camera. If you look back into like my very first video, I'm standing there and I'm like all prim and I'm talking like I'm in a lecture hall and I'm presenting to my peers on my literary journey. And it's just very like, I was so nervous to be myself in front of the camera that I kind of squashed my personality. And now I just don't care, y'all, <laughs> to be honest. I'm just, I'll say anything on this platform, really. Like, wow. So I think I've really just grown in confidence in front of the camera. So I think that's been the biggest improvement to my booktube channel. Thank you so much for booking out loud. Those are some great questions. Thank you, thank you. Steve talks about books and stuff, asks, what type of music do you like? That's a good one, I like that. No one's ever asked me that before, I think ever. It really, really depends on the day. I love Taylor Swift, I'm not gonna be like shy about that. I think 1989 is one of the best albums ever written. I'm gonna say it out loud. I also love Lana Del Rey. She's very like vintage and austere and glamorous and I love her music. Oh my goodness, so great. Love her stuff. Um, I do also sometimes really enjoy like the pop music type of thing, whatever's like hip or now or whatever. And I also enjoy such bands like Papa Roach, Five Finger Death Punch, and Pretty Reckless. All, you get all types of Lady Jane on this channel, all types. So great question, Steve. That one made me smile. Rosie Cockshut asks, I would love to know what your inspiration and motivation was to start a booktube channel. That's a phenomenal question. So I've mentioned before that I really wanted to make a booktube channel years ago. And at the time I was hanging out with somebody who didn't have that same interest. And so whenever I would bring up books that I was reading or, or new authors or even mention I want to start a booktube, they would literally scoff and say, oh, you and your books, why are you always talking about books? That's so boring, oh my gosh. And kind of constantly hearing that narrative put a damper on my passion and my drive to want to start a booktube. And I really, really regret that I let that into my head and I didn't start booktube when I wanted to. So it's always been something that I've wanted to in the back of my mind, but I never thought that anybody would want to hear what I had to say. And then of course 2020 happened and no one was doing much of anything. And I was reading a lot more books when it popped into my head, you know what? This year has been such crap. Why don't you do what you want to do, Jane? Why don't you start a booktube channel? You've read plenty of books. You, nobody else is talking to you about any of this stuff see what you can do. So I did, I sat down in front of a camera and I talked about the books that I had read that month and I uploaded it. And to be honest, I was so nervous the first couple of times because I was like, nobody wants to hear what you're reading, Jane. What, what are you doing? It's just like your friend said. But then as more and more people, but then as I started connecting to more and more people, I really found like my niche and some really incredible creators. And I realized that, no, you know, this is a lot of fun. This is a bigger community and it has gotten me through some very, very dark days. So I'm, that's why I started is technically because I didn't really have anything else to do at this point, like a lot of people. So I figured why not do something that makes you happy and you've always wanted to do. And for me, what I always wanted to do was booktube. And the rest is history, Rosie. Thank you so much for asking, Rosie. That was a wonderful question. Thank you. 
The next question comes from Dark Between Pages. Dark Between Pages asks, who is someone in your real life and a character from a book that inspires you in your day-to-day -day life? That is phenomenal, Dark Between Pages. I love that question. Oh my gosh, I love it. For this, I definitely have to go with my parents. They are both incredibly brilliant people. And beyond that, they are sensationally kind. They worked incredibly hard all of their life to give me and my family a better life and a better chance at life. And as I get older, I really appreciate what they went through in order to give me the life that I have now and give me a great chance at a career and a life. It's incredible. And they did it with such kindness and love and patience every single day. So I have to say that both of them, my mother and my father, are my biggest real life inspirations. As for book characters, I absolutely adore Evelyn Hugo from The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is not a surprise. Evelyn Hugo is such a like go-getter and she went for what she wanted and she had this big beautiful career and she lived life to the fullest and she just took no crap from anybody. She kind of reminds me of like a more glamorous Tommy Shelby in that way and I love Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders like that's not a secret either. So seeing her ambition really fuels my ambition and I kind of get pumped up when I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo thinking yeah I could have a big beautiful life too. Yeah I can do anything too. Look at Evelyn Hugo. Evelyn Hugo is a uh, fictional character by the way but still look at Evelyn Hugo's accomplishments. So. I have to say, for real life, it has to be my mother and father. And for a fictional character, definitely Evelyn Hugo. Thank you so much, Dark Between Pages. That was a lovely question. I'm so glad you asked that. The next question is from David at David's Book Reviews. David asks, when are you going to read The Two Good Dogs? And what is the strangest novel you have read since you have been on booktube? Great questions, David. So to answer about two good dogs, I don't know, okay, David? I am a mood reader. If I wanna wake up one day and say I want to read a wholesome, beautiful, probably a little sad story about two good dogs, then I will read two good dogs. But if I wake up and say I want to read about serial killers, murderers, and abductions, that's what I'm gonna read first. So I honestly can't tell you when I'm gonna read it. I have to kind of wait for the mood to strike. That's really unpredictable. So I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you, but I appreciate your question. And the strangest novel that I've read since I've been on booktube has to be The Resurrectionist by Rath James White. I have a rant review about this book. It is pretty controversial because I know a lot of extreme horror fans love Rath James White's books, but this one just was not for me. Um, it was really kind of out there and I'm all for like out there but this one was out there and way too violent for me and to well, go watch the rant review you'll you'll get it you'll understand my my ideas on that but basically this book is about a man who has the ability to resurrect the dead and he uses it for nefarious purposes it's really sick it's really gross it was very strange. I didn't like it. Go check out my rate review if you want to hear more. But great questions, David. Really appreciated it. Our next question comes from Sunny Luca. Sunny asks, out of all the books you own, which one has your favorite cover? That's a good question. I'm going to once again say The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I love this green color, I love the dress, I love the hint of hair. It's just really beautifully created and I love this cover to death. It's, oh, beautiful. Sunny also asks, do you have a favorite romance trope? And if so, what it is? That's a good one, Sunny. Oh, I like that, I've never thought of that before. I have to say, I like kind of the darker romance type of things, so I, really like bad boys in my books. Don't ask why, I just do. I really like like the bad boy tropes and I really like kind of mafia romances, you know, like business deals and everything and these really like tough guys taking brides because it's like about business and not about love. It's really interesting, I love that type of story. Don't ask me why, it's kind of sick. But, <laughs> but 
Mm. I'm just I'm hearing this now, and I'm like, wow, you're you're kind of sick, Jane. Well, that that's not normal. That's not a normal thing, Jane. But I do enjoy a really good dark romance every once in a while, Sunny. Thank you so much for asking. I just discovered that about myself. Thank you. <laughs> but seriously, great questions. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to everybody who participated. Thank you again for over 200 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I, she's been, she's been, not diagnosed, diagnosed is not the right word, Jane. She has been described as birds, birds everywhere. Diaz discusses, asks, say that five times fast, Jane. Diaz discusses, Diaz discusses, Diaz discusses. After that, I need I need another cup of tea. Is there a favorite and least favorite moody moody? Do you say moody, Jay? No, not moody. Movie. The next questions come from who? But I do like the cover. For booking out loud, asks what is my biglish. English. <laughs> Dark between Quaid. cages? No, it's not cages, Jane. Dang, you're reading too many romance novels. <laughs>